Good morning and welcome to another online service here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori and Pastor Rita I and co-pastor, senior pastors at House of Power Outreach. And we just welcome you into this service today. We are just so honored and blessed. We're going to be back on the book of Revelations. It's going to be a nice sermon. Four more chapters to go. So we can get through, try to get through two of them today. I'm just and just blessed this whole time. Uh, please uh, continue to lift us up in prayer. Please go to our online, uh, our website, and look at different ministries. Pray over us, if at the very least. Uh, if you want to partner with us, you can do that financially. I would love to have you be a part of that and be able to be a part of all of what God is doing. And so we're just so grateful. We still meet in person uh, at 10 a.m. And so please come and join us for in-person service. Love to uh, have your see your smiling face and just have you there um, as well don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to this YouTube channel so we're gonna pray and then we're gonna jump right into the word dear Heavenly Father we just praise you for today we thank you we pray for those who may not be feeling well we pray for healing we thank you Lord God for them to be encouraged mentally physically and emotionally we thank you Lord God for your word today Lord God that I decrease you increase give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say in Jesus name Amen. All right, so Book of Revelation 9, Rejoicing in Heaven. So we're getting close to that part um, and that we're going <clears> to <throat> get into. So Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 through 8, it says, And after these things I heard a great voice of, of, of much people in heaven uh, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and four and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God uh, omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen and the righteousness of the saints. So there's just rejoicing in heaven. The victory has come. The enemy was raining. I mean, doing it raining, but he was just running things for so long. And we can even see that during today's time. You, you rejoice, rejoice. Heaven always went. Heaven always comes out on top, and so uh, at, over. And this is over the fall of Babylon, and, and enduring until the end, when the temptations give in, and just bow, and and just bow to the surroundings was so strong. It was such a strong temptation, but they're rejoicing because. They didn't do that. They didn't bow to the temptation, and neither should you. It doesn't matter what culture says. It doesn't matter what, what's popular say. Don't bow. Don't give up your faith to, for anything. And it's, it's one thing, you know, it doesn't matter. My family, whoever it may be, uh, I'm not going to sit back and be quiet and just let someone go to hell. Especially not, just, just not anyone. I was going to say especially not a family, but not anyone. So that's why we speak up. It's not against hating anyone or hating uh, them as a person, but we hate sin. And right, if you're going, if you're going to really truly love hard, you're going to have to hate some things hard, and you got to hate things that are wrong. You got to hate things that are against God, so you can be for God in such a loving way. And so, the powerful of what you do. Uh, one one thing I, I want to kind of slip back into Revelations uh, chapter 18 and verse 23, uh, and it talks about all of these people have their place in a lake of fire, and it's like magic, sorcery, enchantment. Uh, these these things, the Greek, this is for the Greek word for sorcery, from uh, pharmacus, which medication, i.e. magic. And as we see today, people are hooked on legal and illegal drugs. So sorcery, basic, one of the Greek words for it is pharma, pharmaceutical, pharmacy. 
is where to get medications. There are people more hooked on medication than they are on God, more hooked on the things and illegal and illegal, the opioid addiction. It's going, that is so wild and running rampant that, that it's been uh, used at a place. And so these things uh, begin to take over the mind, which God never calls for anything to have our mind more than him. So we have the mind of Christ. And so we must continue to pray for complete deliverance. Um, Jesus is our healer. And when medicine is in misuse, it leads to slavery. You know, or so you, can, you can take too much medicine you can do too much uh, I even think about that even too much of what we call a good thing you know we said to have water I remember one year we were fasting doing a 21 day fast and all I had was water for four days but I drank so much and I found and I went into the restroom at the gym and then start you know obviously releasing the water that was within me I found out you could drown from drinking too much water that you could actually drown yourself so I was thinking like wow what a wild thing to be doing. And so always be careful in you know, doing things as, as according to God. So we want complete deliverance and Jesus, uh, when he's our deliverer. So this is our message as well, that no matter how things look around you, you're winning the eternal race, the eternal life by staying with God. God, it may look like, it looked like the devil had won over Jesus. They're marching him up there. They're crucifying him. They stick him in a grave. It looked like he'd won, but he's not. Verse 6 through 9, praise for the marriage of the Lamb. There's praise for the, for the marriage of the Lamb. And when we commit to praise, that becomes louder than any other voice uh, competing for our attention and there is absolutely nothing hell can do to stop praise so you always want to stop and praise God but the marriage of the lamb it, it is the marriage that we have you look at the in the uh, Matthew 25 and a parable of the ten virgins and it's talking about when the when the uh, when the husband to be came and he would blow a horn and those would that that had oil had oil to turn their lamps on there was five that didn't and they wanted to borrow at that time but you know it's too now is the time today is the day for salvation you know not when it's not when it's dire just turn now and they didn't have oil so they couldn't give it and the other one said i can't give you my oil i won't have anything to turn my lamp on and it comes to a place to take that responsibility well just like this in those days those customs were the groom would go off with the father to build a house and similar to what jesus said i go away to prepare a place for you in my father's house are many mansions and so they we would take the son to go prepare a place for his bride to be and the father, the son can come back to the father said the house was complete. And then he would come back and he'd come back when he was ready because he wanted to come back and get the girl. And so he'd come back and in the middle of the night, if it was, he would blow his horn. And all the virgins, because they didn't know which one it would be that was coming, they would get their lamps and they'd have oil for their lamps so that the light can be on them and that, see if that's the one. You know, we got to be ready. we got to keep oil. we got to keep the oil full of us, the, the oil of gladness, the oil of righteousness, the oil of God in us at all times. So the light will stay constant and consistent. Uh, so that praise, that's our voice. We commit to praise. It's louder than any other thing, especially in the midst of a storm. Praise, praise, worship, worship. They are critical. You see it here in the verses. Uh, Psalms 45, 1 says, my heart overflows with a good thing. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Uh, when your heart is overflowing with the, with the things of God, your tongue is always ready to write, no matter what the circumstances are. Your tongue sits and says, here's my Father who art in heaven. How would be thy name? Your tongue just writes about God and writes about the goodness of God because that's what it's full of. That's what comes out of it. When you're pressed, what comes out of you is what you're filled with, uh, just like a sponge. Uh, and so heaven is heaven, no matter what. Heaven is always going to be heaven. It's always going to be what, what we need for it to be as it is. And we can access it here on earth, according to Matthew 6 and 10, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we make ourselves ready by the washing of the water of God's word. And this is our life source that nothing, nothing should be decided without or over God's word in our life. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Everything we do, every decision we're going to make, especially these major things, you know, as the body of Christ, it's, it's our deal, our arbitrator is, is Jesus. He's the one that fights for us. It's his word that he loves for us. This is the arbitration. What, what shall I do, Lord? Well, here it is. We're, what, here's, what does my word say? 
What did I say? What did I call you to? What have I called you to believe in? And where have I called you to stand? But if we get so used to hearing what we want to hear and doing what we want to do or hearing others who are not even aligned with the Word of God, we'll begin to drift away from this washing and become, you know, unclean in the sense of this is what I want to do instead of God. And we kind of changed that whole Genesis. It's in the beginning Then we created God and we're trying to make God in our image instead of allowing him to make us in his image. So every washing, every cleansing, it comes from heaven according to his word. Uh, don't get overwhelmed by those who despise and reject you. They will one day see Christ in you, who they are also, who they also despise and rejected. So rejoice in your blessed ending instead of your right now misery. Rejoice in, in that, that you're in a whole different race than what these folks who are coming against you, especially the ungodly, are coming against you. They're coming against you. They're doing ungodly acts anyway. Uh, so verse 10, the angel stopping John from trying to worship it, worship it and, and we must worship God and God alone. Bowing to anything else is just sinful, it's idolatry. And no matter the angels stop you and say, oh no, 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 we only bow to God here. You don't bow to me just because whatever you see, I'm bigger, whatever you don't see, uh -uh, you only bow to God. Verse 11 through 16, Jesus returned to earth uh, with, a mighty, with a mighty army from heaven. We have access to the most victorious army, I love this, and should never fight from a place of anger or hate, but from a place of worship. And the Bible says the victory is ours when the battle is the Lord. So we fight from that place of worship. We fight with a face of, with a place of praise. We, we fight in that. Uh, you know, I was thinking even this week uh, in just uh, the second day, just, you know, of, of during a uh, time of just fasting. And I was just so overwhelmingly hungry, like hungry, like I've never felt before thinking, okay, maybe I'm supposed to be eating, maybe, you know. And then I... I got a hold of this worship and I just started to worship God and and, and it, it was just supernatural the way God began to fill me uh, in that time and it will tell you this whatever you're hungry for please go and worship God go worship God first go spend time go spend some hours in the presence of God and watch him fill you up as the scriptures say taste and see that God is good and sometimes it's not hungry for food because sometimes we can eat and still be miserable right afterwards but it is a hunger for something and God wants to fill that void each and every time. So in, in verse 11 through 16, Jesus returned into the earth, and he's talking about that. Uh, and so Romans 12, 19 says, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And Zechariah 4, 3 through 4 references of Jesus coming back uh, uh, to the Mount of Olives to fulfill the plea of Isaiah 64, 1 and 2. So these are references where Jesus is going to come back to, to the Mount of Olives. And, and they're just tell, telling you how the Bible is lines up. This is, again, the, the truth of the Word of God. This is this is it. This is God speaking. This is it. There's a, you, there people, there's, it couldn't be changed. It couldn't be stopped. They couldn't, they couldn't rearrange it. Even though those who hated it still could not stop it because it was spirit-led, spirit-filled, and God, God protected it. God protect authority and this is what we got to go by this is what we got to go by men only wrote it because it was God moving through them to write it it was not man's right it was not man's writings it was God speaking through them and moving on them to do so uh, and so we look at that Jesus on a white horse is significant um, and that most soldiers were foot soldiers and to have a horse meant that you were at the advantage and Christ is always uh, at the advantage and always will. God will always ride higher than our enemies. Praise uh, God. When they go low, you need to go high. I think uh, the, uh, uh, Michelle Obama said that and you need to go high and it's a spiritual thing and I'm not saying that, that, that she wrote the Bible and I'm just saying we need to be doing that. You know, go higher. In righteousness, he judges and makes war. The, the world loves, and I, it is, I love this, the world loves a complacent and hiding religion. But God called us to be bold and stand up for what we believe. The world loves it when, when religion bows to them. They're, they're looking for the okay sign. No, we're not going to give the okay sign to sin. Again, we're not okay with anyone going to hell. So we're not going to okay it. We're, we're going to actually speak up and tell them what the Bible really says. Uh, and verse 17 through 18, the invitation to the Great Supper. There are four suppers uh, are described in the Bible. Uh, the Supper of Salvation, 
uh, alluded to in Jesus parable in Luke 14 verse 16 through 24 the Lord's Supper a commemoration of Jesus' sacrifice the marriage supper of the lamb and then the supper the supper of the great of the great God which is this is what we're in so however if you reject that first supper the second supper will mean will mean nothing to you then you will not be present at the third supper but will be the will be present at the fourth supper everybody gets to attend at least one of these suppers but some will eat and others are eaten at the suppers you know, think about that you know I'm invited here to eat do I know why I'm here do I know why I got born again? Do I know why I'm saved? I know I did it as a kid, but I don't have a relationship now. You know, and God will call you back to that relationship. Call you back to that time. Call you back to that place. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to be a part of your life and, and be able to grow. And we, we see this, right? We see things uh, trying to be cut off. In verse 19 through 21, war and victory of Jesus Christ. This is an entirely one-sided affair, by the way. More of a simple act of judgment than a prolonged battle or war. The battle of Armageddon is the laughter of God against the climax of man's arrogance. It's a, it's a laughter. It's a joke because God is, is dominating. It's just really, when, so we hear the word war, we always think long battles. This won't be long. Revelation chapter 20 and verse um, 1 through 6 says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and, and, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Then I saw and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So the fact that this angel is unknown, which is so powerful to me, this blew me away when I read this commentary. It, it just shows that not God or Jesus dealt with Satan, goes to show that Satan was never an equal with God or Jesus. This is an unknown angel got him and just threw him in there. You just say how powerful God is. Not devil's not a match. In fact, the devil's really not a match for you. He get as much power as we give him. And, and I even say I, I love this when I read that they said they need to worship the beach, beast or his image. And and a lot of people will say I don't you know I believe in God, but they have the image that looks like the world or looks like the devil or looks like ungodliness. Well, don't don't worship either one. Don't worship the beast and don't look or imitate things that are beastly or ungodly you know we want to worship God and him alone and so you begin to look at how do I uh, carry myself it's one thing to say I don't bow to him but how I carry myself do I do I have images of it and so we want to walk fulfilled in God verse 2 through 3 Satan is in prison for a thousand years Satan couldn't keep Jesus Jesus in the tomb even with a big rock in front of him, remember that. So he couldn't even keep him in the tomb. Uh, but God has no problem restraining and imprisoning Satan. And in whatever prison you may be in, let's just let's just talk about this because you need to turn to God because He has no is no. It, when you believe, when you put your faith in God and trust in God, He's no respecter of person. If He set me free, He'll set you free. You know that prison does. He Satan has no right to hold you. Uh, you have every right to be free, no matter how strong and how long the addiction may be. This is not just a spiritual binding, but also a physical and physical binding, as well as we are called, according to Matthew 18, 18, what we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We have every right to be free while we're here. We have every right to walk in victory while we're here, just like heaven is a free place, just like heaven is a victorious place. We have every right to do just that. So, um... We can't just make a confession or even a prayer only, but to live like 
to live like sin is bound in our daily life. So don't just go around talking about it. Go around being about it. Go on around living it. Have gear and game, you know. Uh, Psalm 72, uh, Isaiah 2, verse 2 through 4. Isaiah 11, verse uh, 4 through 9. Jeremiah 23, verses 5 through 6. And in many, many more passages. The New Testament we see in Luke 1, 32 through 33. Matthew 5, 18. Luke 19, 12 through 27. Among other passages. All talks about how, you know, heaven is going to have victory and come in and reign. All in all, these are more than four. There are more than 400 verses in more than 20 different passages of the Old Testament, which deal with this time when Jesus Christ will rule and reign personally over the planet Earth. Personally, he reigns. The thousand year reign is significant of Jesus power and Satan's weakness, as well of exposing the belief that man is good by themselves and without God. Which Romans 3.23 clearly states that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know, you're a good person. You need to accept Christ if you want to get to heaven. Just because you've done some good things here, you know, God wants you to be a good thing to him. And be a good thing in your belief. Faith in Jesus. Um, verse 7 through 8, Satan is released and gathers an army. If Jesus had reigned so wonderfully for a thousand years, y'all got to hear this part. And I know we're getting close to time, but... Jesus reigned for a thousand years, then, then why the earth rebel? We have those questions all the time. If, if God is good and if God is his why are people do evil? People are going to do evil. People are going to do wrong. You, you just stay prayed up. You stay before God. People gonna, if Jesus reigned personally over the earth. Satan was still able to come and people still follow. You think about this. This is, a, this is a critical time. They will do it and God will allow it. As a final demonstration of man's rebellion and depravity. If we don't come to God, it doesn't matter how good we are. If we don't give it over to God, we're going to give ourselves over to God at all times and everything. I don't mean we won't make mistakes, but we go back to God. The depravity of that that's naturally in us is to turn, is to go. we got to go toward God and make that not, not just a natural person, but be that supernatural person that God has called us to be. Outward conformity to Jesus' rule will be required during his reign. But seemingly, an inward embrace of his lordship will still be up to the individual. I mean, we just can't serve him on the outside and not have him on our inside. We can't just say, well, I do this for the church, or I do this for this place, and I do this for this place. I just got hate in my heart. I just don't believe. You know, I just got these. Uh, listen, give it to God. All of it. Inwardly, outwardly, give it all to God. In Revelations 20, uh, verse 9 and 10, and, and they went up on the, on the breath of the earth and compass the camp of the saints about and and the beloved city and fire came down from heaven out came down uh, from have from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever the battle that ends before it even begins we have the victory. Even say that. Revelations 20, 11 through 15. And I saw a great and white throne, and him that sat on it from, from the face of the earth, with, and, and the heaven fled away, and there was found no places for him for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the book of life according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and dealt uh, and death and hell delivered up to the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire um, as we think about this right as there is a second and second and higher life so there's also a second and deeper death and as and after that life there is no more death. So after the death, there is no more life. There's no more opportunity to get that life. Just like for us who die, who go to heaven, there's no more death. There's no more dying days. The devil and the damned have, have uh, punishment without pity, without misery, and without mercy. Sorrow without a sucker, crying without comfort, mischief without measure, torments without end, and past imagination. We think about that, and that was the trap commentary. 
there's a common time, time that no matter how much you know there's you know we've seen even in the world today someone can do just heinous crimes and have multiple murders but you know ultimately get caught and you know they're they're sympathetic and there's a sorrow for that person because of you know what they did but they have to pay for their sins as the bible said there's a sin unto death and their sin is not unto death and you know if they're going off to death row or whatever you've seen outpouring crime because you know the saying like he's changed or sometimes there are things that just come to no mercy you know that second death where people have had their chance had their chance had their chance had their chance and then turn to god they just chose not to believe in god that is a is a tormenting death that's an ending where there's no more life well we don't want anyone neighbor friend grocery store whatever we want to reach them all or stand up and that's why we stand up for what we believe so let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you for the rejoicing of heaven we know that when it's all said and done that god you're going to be standing and all of us who stood with you will stand with you then once again. Father, I pray for those who are feeling like it's miserable, feel like I can't take it anymore, I can't go through this anymore, it's just too much, it's, it's just too heavy. I pray, Father God, that they cast all of their care over on you, that they lean not on their own understanding, but they trust in you in all their ways, Father, as they allow you to come in and you to minister to them, strengthen them, Lord God, so that they can endure to the end, because those that endure to the end shall be saved. Honey, I mean, there's salvation there. There's the brother, there's salvation there. There's blessing there. You're on the right track. And Father, I thank you for this power of encouragement and blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.